Hi, how are you? It's Chris of Chrissy's Over the Mountain Crochet.com. It's good to see you again today. If you're here, chances are you're part of the second of the second segment of my dual crochet along. Dual because there's two sweaters involved in this crochet along. There's the mountain sunrise and then the morning on the beach. They're made out of color gradient yarn out of a number one super fine yarn um, and they're beautiful I just love the colors but you know I did cut the yarn but if you're here it's about the second segment you should have already made the yoke the yoke now we're moving on to the second segment the second segment will include the bodice and I'll be giving you sizing tips and tips on how to change and cut. Yes, cut the color gradient yarn. If you don't want to make a color gradient sweater, this is going to be beautiful in solid colors also. I'm um, using Lion Brand Summer Nights to make this, um, to make the Mountain Sunrise. It has a little bit of metallic thread in it, and I think it'll be really pretty with this, um, with this lace edge on it. And then I also have a really pretty mustard color. I think this morning on the beach is going to be beautiful in a solid color. And I have that in mustard. I'm really excited about that, about making one in mustard. But let's talk about the yoke. I wore this past, this is a past design. And I wore this simply because I want to talk to you about where, um, the how the yoke should fit. I made this a while back and it was a test. I was testing a 1x size. I wasn't able to get to my computer, but I could get to yarn and a hook, and so I was testing for a 1x. I'm not a 1x, and as you can see, the yo the underarm is too long. It really should be up here. So that's so that's what I want to point out to you on this yoke portion. On the yoke portion, you have corners. This doesn't have corners. This is a round yoke. So the underarm chain is just slightly different. But the yoke on this sweater comes around, there's the shoulders, here's the front, and it has a corner because you have a v-stitch and it has a corner. Now the last row of your yoke should fit, right, should land right about at your armpit, maybe an inch, inch and a half longer than your armpit, where your armpit is. So then it, you have this portion, so the next portion is, is you're going to crochet along the bottom. Then you're going to make a longer chain, it's going to be your underarm chain, and it's going to come over and match. These two portions are going to come together, you're going to have an underarm chain between them, and they're going to come together and make your shoulder area. Just like that. There's your shoulder, and there will be a chain right in between, and that's where you'll put your arm through. And so then it will go through and continue, you will continue to crochet around, and it will make your bodice. So, I'm excited about that. So an inch and a half. If your yoke is too short, add a row or two. But for each row, you need to add eight stitches. If your yoke is too long, take out a row. And remember to take out eight stitches. It's, you can keep track of it if you want to. If you don't really want to, there are spots where you can stop and count your stitches so that when you get to this lace portion, you know you will have the correct amount of stitches. Isn't that lace portion beautiful? Same here. Now let's talk about let's talk about gauge and sizing. You need a super fine number one weight yarn, and you should be able to make gauge. Slightly off is not going to bother, not going to be that big of a deal. I will be here to help you. So that leads me into sizing. Sizing. You can make, you can achieve gauge, make a sweater exactly as the designer wrote it down, and it's still not fit well. We're not all made the same. You might need more fabric in the front, but still be a size six everywhere else, but need more fabric in the front. You could be a size six in the top and a size 12 on the bottom and need more fabric at the bottom. So I'm going to give you a quick tutorial real fast on how you can do that, how you can add increase, add stitches, increase or decrease. Now, I did go over in the first sec segment of the pattern how to compensate for shallow shoulders, deep shoulders, a larger back, a rounded back, and if you previously knew you were going to need more 
uh, fabric on the front, how to add more stitches to the and how to add more chains to the base chain to give you that um, extra fabric in the yoke area. So, but if you're past the yoke and you know, because the yoke just comes to here, but you know you're going to need more fabric here or more fabric in the hips, or you want more fabric here and then you want to cut it back in at the waist, let me show you how. Here's how you do this. You have, uh, when you look at someone, you look straight at the very front, on the front, and then down the sides. Now, if you're wanting more fabric in the front, you're going to want to add stitches on either side, not straight down the front. Add your increases on either side, not straight down the front, because the eye is drawn straight to the front, and people will notice that, and I don't think that's, that's a, a good thing for you to see. So if you need fabric there, if you need more fabric in the back, you can add stitches in the back. Just keep track of your stitch count. Unless you're like me and you wait until you get to this point to where you're making the lace and you just want to count your stitches there. That's what I do. And then do the math. I've made the pattern easy for you to do the math and for you to change up the stitches and the sizing. Now, if you have added increased stitches right here and you want to cut it back in, Oh, please feel free to do the exact same down the sides and on either side on the front and down on the side and just decrease those stitches in. You can take those out if you want. Now, same on the hips. If you're going to want more flare on the hips, you're going to want to add stitches along the back, along the back, just randomly add the stitches in along the back and along, whoops, She's going to fall off her chair and along the front. But, but the morning on the beach does not have flare anyway. So you, if you have larger hips, you will need to add increased stitches. And I'll show you where to add those stitches, those increases at, so that they're not real noticeable. And it's just, it's the best place to add the increases. It's, it's a fabric thing. It's uh, when you are sewing, if you're wanting a larger size, generally the inches are added at the sides. So this mountain sunrise has flare added into the pattern. I wanted it to kind of flare out. So here is how I did the increases so that it has a little bit of flare. Like I said, you may want add, you may want more flare so you can put stitches in the back, add increased stitches in the back. So here's how I did it. I'm going to lift up the armpit. Let me see. Can you, oh, let me, all right. Let me move her just a little bit so you can see. There we go. There we go. There's two markers here. There's a marker here and a marker here. And I added increases right there. Then two rows down, and the pattern will explain all this to you. It will give you a guide on how many increases you will want her size, but you can add as many increases as you'd like, but I would generally space them out right in this area, and then if you want to space them out in the back, you can space them out in the same way, but I would add one on either side of the underarm, and then if you want a third one, you can put one right there, but within the same row, I would add those increases, then I would drop two rows down, add the increases, drop two rows down add the increases, or you may only want one increase. You may want a tighter fit um, on the bottom, or you just may not have much flare on the bottom yourself so that you may want it to fit a little closer, just one increase. You will need increases. Now, speaking of the morning on the beach, since it does not have any flare to it at all, if your hips are a little larger than your top, you're going to want to add um, the increases. And since these two sweaters are running in tandem, it will be easy for you to refer to the mountain sunrise under the arm on how to add the sizing. Remember, if you need more fabric in the front, add your increases on the side and on the inside right here. And then if you want to bring it back in to cut into your waist, then just take them out right in this area. Just the same process. Add increase and decrease, add and reverse. So you can do that easily. Next segment is about the sleeves and the edging. 
Now, I want to talk to you a little bit more about yarn color changes and how I cut the yarn. I did cut the yarn. I know a lot of folks do not like to cut color gradient yarn, but it's if you want a sweater that has the color that the sleeve matches and look how beautiful that is. The colors just run together so beautifully. You're going to want to cut the yarn and where I cut the yarn was at the front. Where I changed the color was at the front and I would at the yoke. I did not change color at all at the yoke. Then when I got into the bodice, I went two rows and would cut the yarn roll up what was left until I got to the next color and you can tell because there's a little knot. I have another video that describes how to do that and how much yarn to either take off beforehand or how much yarn to take off at the end. That way you have yarn to finish out the sleeves so that the sleeves match the bodice. You're going to want generally the same colors right here. Let me move this over. You're going to want generally the same colors that are right here to bleed into the sleeve. So right here is where I made sure I cut a portion of the yarn off, rolled it into a ball. Now the sleeves um, will just kind of flow with the sweater, but like I said, I cut the yarn maybe every two rows, three rows sometimes. Some color runs are longer than the others, and while you're working with the yarn, you can see that but make sure you roll up a ball and then there's another video describing how I kept track of the colors I don't want to keep you here on that but and you can always come to my group Chrissy's Over the Mountain Crochet and Crafts on Facebook go to Facebook I have a crochet and craft group there that you can come and get advice get help and get tips I will be there to help you now let me say this again. I did not cut the yarn during the yoke. I started cutting the yarn after I started working on the bodice every two rows. I didn't change the yarn unless I was at the edge on one side. It doesn't matter which side it is, the left or the right, but this is where I switched the colors. I didn't switch the color in the middle. I switched it on the edge. I cut it and I switched it on the edge then I rolled up my ball and I put it in a little baggie. All right now I hope this has helped you. I hope you understand that I really want to help you make these sweaters. They're beautiful, they're easy and now that I can find yarn that is close by because this yarn is hard to find but um, I'm seeing some uh, pictures in Facebook of some of the ladies that have already made their yokes and they have some similar colors from Hobie, I believe, of the Mountain Sunrise. I'm excited about that. I'm so excited to see the finished projects. I hope you'll throw your finished projects up on Ravelry if you're a part of Ravelry. If not, I hope you'll throw them up on Facebook. That'll be so exciting. I can't wait to see the sweaters. I can't wait to get my sweater made in this mustard color. I've decided I'm making one of mustard. I'm going to use uh, Lion Brand Summer Nights to make another one of these has a little bit of metallic yarn in it it's really pretty but so let me go over some basics again the pattern help and tips and questions come to my Facebook group Chrissy's over the mountain crochet and crafts do a little search in the search bar it's a group you have you can see what's going on in there but if you want to be a part of it and ask questions you have to ask to join we'll let you in we'll let you in if we don't let you in send me a little note all right and you can reach me there you can reach me on YouTube um, after this crochet along is over and it will be over September 31st 2020 so this is done after 2020 it's free right now but these will be a premium pattern after the crochet along is over. You will find them in my Ravelry shop and in my Etsy shop. I'll post those links in the description. I will keep the pattern up on my website, but I will be removing the individual charts and the um, extra tips and tricks. I don't want my website to be heavy. Uh, it will be minimal video. So 
if you're wanting the pattern after the crochet along is over, it is still available to you. Now I have used a unique or a different way. I don't know if anyone has incorporated this um, way of writing patterns, but I'm doing it just a little different than I have ever done. I've started this recently with some of my um, lace cube covers, but started writing the pattern when I got to the lace portion, I would have the written pattern, then right below it, would be a crochet chart just for that very row. And then you go down to the next row and it would have its individual uh, crochet chart. It's a photo. And those photos make my website heavy, so I'll be removing those. But it's a unique way to write crochet patterns. I'm liking it. That way you can visually see the written pattern and the chart. You don't have to scroll down, find the big chart, or scroll up and find the big chart and then and then look and say, what line am I on? It's all right there for you. I want to help you make these sweaters. And if you need anything from me or need any help from me, please come to the um, Facebook group. The patterns, the written patterns with all the tips are being hosted on my website, chrissysoverthemountaincrochet.com. All the help and tips, live videos, will happen on Facebook. And I hope to see you there. Like I said, it's good to see you on my side of the mountain again. I hope you'll continue to make some trips over here to see us on our side of the mountain. Um, if you like this video, please subscribe. Um, I think my children are pretty excited about me finally starting my YouTube um, career, if that's what you want to call it, but I would like for this to be an amplification of my past patterns and my new patterns. I've been designing for quite a few years. I have quite a few uh, patterns in my Ravelry and my Etsy shop, and I would so appreciate your business. And I thank you so much again for coming to my side of the mountain. I hope you have a great day. Bye.